Hey family, hey family, hey family. Happy Monday to you all. Happy Monday. Darlene A. Anderson here, entrepreneur, personal and professional development consultant, author of Not Without a Fight, 10 Ways to Win, When It Appears You've Already Lost, and your social media friend. Welcome. If you landed on the page, I ask that you like, share, and subscribe accordingly and click that notification bell so you will be in the know of the latest happenings as they are happening. And of course, I appreciate you so very much for joining me on today or tomorrow or whenever you land on this video. All right, Motivational Mondays. Let's dive right into it. Constructive criticism, all shapes, forms, and sizes, right? We can't get away from it. Next week, I'm going to be talking about negative criticism, but today I want to be talking about criticism specifically from people that you love, people that want the best for you, whether it's your parents, your siblings, your children, your friends, people in the church, people that are just like you are so amazing. It's like you could do anything, like you bring cookies every week to the church. They think that you should go on ahead and be a chef, but God is calling you to be a doctor. What do you do when that happens? Everyone's like, oh my God, Sister Betty is amazing. When she brings these cookies and these cakes in, it is to die for. Sister Betty, when are you going to culinary school? And you're like, all I do is think about being a doctor. I don't want to go to culinary school. I like baking, but it's not what God is calling me to do. What do you do when that happens? You continue down the path of what God is calling you to do. And I'm going to take it a step further. I'm a Christian, so I'm going to relate experiences to the Lord, Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. However, regardless of what your religion is, if you have no religion, we can relate to feeling so excited about something. And someone that you love will come and tell you what they think that you should be doing and keep you off track from like what you're destined to do. And you're just sitting back and like, yeah, I am good at it. No. Again. Do what's in your heart. I'm gonna share with you guys a little story. You guys know I'm a storyteller, right? I remember being around 16, 17, 18 and sitting down with my dad. And his thing was, look, you're gonna have a city job, city state job. You're gonna be a parole officer, a, a correction officer, a MTA worker driving a bus or running um, or uh, driving the trains, like whatever it is, uh, he's like, you're gonna do this. You're going to go to the airport. You're going to get that type of job. I needed a job that would have stability to the point where I would be able to retire, have a pension, you know, have consistent health insurance, all of that good stuff. And it's nothing wrong with that. Our world, no matter where you live in the United States of America, it runs on essential workers. Like shout out to essential workers for doing an amazing job and ensuring that we are able to navigate in our own respective lives every day because of them, right? But that wasn't what God was calling me to do. I knew at a very young age that I wanted to be in a business of people. If you guys follow me, I've been in social services for over 30 years. Like I love helping people. And I remember having a hard time with my dad. Like he would bring applications home. And if you can remember, I don't even know if they do this anymore, but they would have the tests posted in the papers and the scores and everything and telling you when it was coming up and he would bring them home and sit down right here we're gonna fill this out and your cousin is doing this and I want you to do this and he's now riding the bus and you need to get in there then he wanted me to marry an MTA worker he just had this vision for me and I had to one day put my foot down and say look I don't want this for myself I don't want to stand up in the court. I don't want all day, every day. And again, shout out, but it wasn't what I saw for myself. I don't want to work with this population. I don't want to be a cop. I don't want to be a CEO. I don't want to do these things. I want to help people. And that is what I pursued. And eventually he had to fall in suit with what I wanted to do from my life. And it was hard. I'll tell you, even I questioned myself from time to time, sitting and looking at my cousins who wound up retiring down the line and I'm still pursuing my dreams, you know, sometimes I said, should I have gone in that path? Should I have taken that, you know, good pension job? Should I have gotten that insurance? Maybe I wouldn't have to work so hard as an entrepreneur. But then I think about what God had called me to do. And I think about those people that I helped to change their lives. When I thought back at what I wanted to do, I wanted to change the world. I wanted to help people. 
I was in alignment with that opportunity time and time again, helping people from zero to 100, helping them step by step along the way, being relatable in the world. That was my mission. And I'm grateful for having that opportunity. And now, you know, although my father has gone on um, to glory, it's, it's many days when I'll sit and I'll say, I hope I made you proud, Dad. But here's the thing. Even if I didn't, even if he was here today, and I'm sure he would say, your cousin, you see where he's at? He's on his second career. He finished that MTA or such and such and such. They're a retired cop. I would be able to look and say, well, here's my stats, Dad. And I hope you're proud. On today, I invite you to really explore where constructive criticism is coming from. There are some things that maybe it's due to health and safety, to your betterment where people are like, oh, consider this. Sometimes we have to take advice um, for what it is, but we also have to remember, people don't share our visions, our dreams. They're not being downloaded assignments like we are. And in that case, you have to take it into consideration for yourself and say, what is meant for me? And at the end of the day, when I see myself 15, 20, 30 years from now, will I be okay with the decision that I'm making today based on this criticism that I'm receiving? And if you will not be, stay on track and do what makes you happy. If you've made it to the end of this video, I thank you so very much. I ask again that you like, share, and subscribe. If you would like more information about consultation work with me, Darlene A. Anderson, both personally and or professionally, please follow up at darlene'sutopia.com. Enjoy the rest of your week, family.